So I guess now we just open it and uh, see see what it's all about. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Adam Draw Stuff. I'm Adam and I draw stuff, and today I'm pretty excited because I'm doing something that I don't think has been done on YouTube yet. At least if it has been, I haven't found it. But today I'm going to be doing a complete drawing using nothing but squid ink. I got this idea from The King of Random, their channel. They did a video where they had fun with squid ink, and I also want to have fun with squid ink. So I thought, what better of a way to do that than to do a complete illustration with nothing but ink from a squid. So you might be wondering, where do you find squid ink? Well, from a squid. But in this case, from Amazon. So I picked up this, and this is technically, if you can see it, um, cuttlefish ink, which I don't know what the difference between a squid and a cuttlefish is, and an octopus. I think they're all like the same fish wearing different clothes. But this is from a cuttlefish, which is, I'm guessing, basically the same thing as a squid. And this is actually sold as a food product. So this is an ingredient in a lot of uh, Mediterranean and Eastern cooking. Um, you can make things like squid ink pasta and um, you can put it in baked goods and apparently it's supposed to really up the flavor of whatever it's in, uh, whatever dish it's in, in a really good way. Um, I don't know. I've never tried it and I've never tried any dishes that have had squid ink in it and I don't think I will. But it's something that can be done apparently. So and it comes in this little tiny container, a little glass jar and from the King of Random, from their video, it was really thick, um, almost like a paste. So I imagine I'm going to have to figure out some kind of way to dilute it, either with water or um, alcohol or some kind of solvent. I'm going to have to dilute it in some way so that it's actually workable with a typical pen. So I guess now we just open it and uh, see, see what it's all about. Whoa. That is the blackest thing I have maybe ever seen. Wow. And it is really thick. I don't know if you can tell if it's showing up on camera, but this stuff is super thick. Oh my god, that's bad. Oh, it smells like somebody left an open can of sardines in a hot car with the windows rolled up. Okay, so don't smell it. Alright, I'm gonna close that for a second. So I guess it makes sense, but it smells pretty fishy. I didn't, for some reason, I thought it was going to smell like chemically or something, but it, it came from a fish, so it, it would make sense, sense that it smells really fishy. Anyway, so this is super thick, so now I, I have to figure out a way of diluting this so that I can use it with a typical fountain pen, like this guy right here. Okay, so I've got a couple of these little containers, and I'm going to try one with water and one with alcohol and see which one works best. So I'm just going to, oh my god, that's so thick. I mean, it's kind of neat, but at the same time, now this does have uh, binders in it, and I think that that adds to the thickness um, and kind of helps stabilize it and make it uh, shelf stable so that it doesn't have to be refrigerated. But man, that's thick. All right, so I'm just gonna put, I should've got a spoon. I'm just gonna put some of this in one of these containers. Spill water everywhere real quick. Wow, that is really dark. So the only thing that I'm a little bit worried about is getting all of the solid bits completely dissolved in a way that's homogenous enough that I can use it as ink. And that looks pretty liquidy. Let's uh, give it a shot on a scrap piece of paper and, ooh, that's too thin. Uh-oh. Maybe, maybe not. Might work. No. Okay. So water might be the way to go, but what I'm going to do is try this again with a little less water and I'm actually going to use some of the water from this first cup if I don't spill it everywhere, as the water for the new batch and see if maybe that'll help give it a little bit more thickness. I feel like I'm going to be walking a fine line here where one single drop of water is going to make or break it. Okay, let's give this a shot and see if this is any better. A 
Okay, so there's probably a reason that nobody's done this before because this just isn't gonna work. I can't quite get the consistency so that it flows like traditional ink does. And that's probably gonna be my biggest sticking point in all of this. Okay, so it's kind of working a little bit, but unlike regular ink, oh my God, I've got it all over my hands. Oh, yuck. <laughs> unlike regular ink, um, it doesn't, the ink that's being held up in the uh, nib doesn't seem to really be flowing very well toward the tip. And I think that's just a consistency issue. You can see there's, if you can see it, there's ink on there, but it isn't flowing toward the tip. So maybe it's too thick? Either that or I should just try with the alcohol. Maybe the binders are getting in the way and the alcohol might be a good enough solvent to break those up a little bit. I don't know. Or I'm a genius and I just figured it out. This is about perfect. This is very nice. This is working. Okay, so I think that this consistency is good enough that we can uh, give our final drawing a shot. I just spilled it. Oh my god. Oh, that's disgusting. Ugh, oh, that's really gross. I spilled it everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands real quick uh, so I don't taint the drawing, and I'll be right back, and we'll get going. Okay, so I have freshly clean hands, and I have my drawing here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I have my initial sketch already down, and um, it's just gonna be kind of a cute little squid, which would make sense, right? Squid, well, it, what would make more sense is if it was a cuttlefish, but a squid reads better, right? Uh, so, you may not be able to see the sketch there, but you'll just have to trust me that it's there, and you'll be seeing it in fresh squid ink in just a minute. So wish me luck, and let's see what happens. Okay, so, so far, this is working out pretty well. Um, my lines are a little bit shaky. One reason is because I'm shaky. Um, I've had a lot of caffeine today, but also I'm using a calligraphy pen and those aren't really the best tool for drawing, um, but it's the best I could come up with uh, for this particular test. But I will say it does seem to actually be working pretty well. Well, there you go. That is my attempt at drawing with cuttlefish ink. Um, didn't turn out terrible. Uh, actually, I mean, I guess it turned out better than I thought it would. Um, I kind of went into it thinking that it wasn't going to work at all, and um, I was able to get a drawing out of it. Now, it's not the best. You'll have to really excuse my disgusting, horribly bad lines. Um, my hands are super shaky, and of course I was using that calligraphy pen too, which just is not right for this. But in spite of all of that, and in spite of this um, not being made for drawing at all, really all it's made for is protecting a cuttlefish. In spite of all of that, it actually worked out. Um, I would not recommend it. There are a couple of caveats in there. One of which is there's a consistency issue, so it's really hard to get it just right. And um, it's also kind of, no matter how much I stirred it, it there was still a little grainy. Um, so that's an issue. It's not smooth like typical ink is. Also, on this test sheet that I was using here, 
the, I don't want to smear this, but um, it kind of, uh, I wonder if you can see that. So it doesn't really dye the paper. It, I mean, it does dye the paper a little bit, but really what it does is when this ink dries, it leaves a sort of residue on there that you can feel. So you can run your hand across uh, this paper, and, oops, you can run your hand across this paper in an area that's dry and you can feel the lines that you leave behind and it's really easy to smear that if you're not paying attention. So that's not ideal when doing a drawing. I had to really focus hard on not overlapping at all with my hand and not going over an area or sitting my hand on an area that I had uh, drawn and let dry previously. But in spite of all of that, also since this is primarily made of melanin, which is the same uh, pigment, it's a natural pigment that is found in your hair, skin, and uh, your, it gives you your eye color. I don't know how light fast this is. I don't know if this drawing will hold up over time and maintain that uh, dark tone that it has right now. So that's another issue. I can't really recommend it if you want to make a piece of art that lasts because I just, I don't know how long it'll last. But for something fun, you know, yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's a little tough, but uh, it's fun nonetheless. But with a little finagling, you can actually wind up with a usable medium. So there you go. That is my attempt at drawing with cuttlefish ink. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle with a medium that is not supposed to be a medium. But if you did, let me know and hit the like button. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more stuff in the pipeline. Um, plenty of other fun things like this coming up soon. So. Uh, till then, I'll see you in the next one.